Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cast and Spirit Podcast. My name is John. We have back on the show Captain Ben Choi. You can find him on Instagram at, at cap.benchoi. So say what's up to him. What's up, Ben? Welcome back. Hey, how's it going? Going well. I hear you are a fantastic culinary genius in the kitchen, and we want to bring that out today and get some of your favorite recipes. Uh, so, so let's start with some of the raw stuff. Um, I'm a huge fan of poke. I'll eat it every day if I could. What is your favorite way to make poke, and do you have any recipes we should know about? Uh, man, I think poke is, you could make it so many different ways. You know, I've had it all over the world in, in different places, Hawaii, Cali, you know, even over here. Um, my favorite is, you know, um, getting a good quality sesame oil. I think it makes a huge difference in the poke. Um, I went to Japan. I picked up some, like, stuff in Japan. I don't even know if I can, like, get it again. Like, it's all in Japanese. Um, that is like the best, like high end, you know, sesame oil. Uh, I think if you're going to go to any Asian grocery store, uh, the brand that I use a lot is Kadoya, K-A-D-O-Y-A, um, Kadoya pure sesame oil. It's just the most fragrant. Um, it's like better than anything you can get in the grocery store. Uh, I don't know. You guys are on the West coast. I'm on the East coast. Like you guys probably have access to way more like high end, stuff than we do just way way better selection um but for us like that that's like the uh, the best stuff that we can get do you also get the really expensive like soy sauces not like the regular kiko men but like some of that fermented aged stuff no no no. i mean i i i'm not into like the fermented soy sauces i think it, i think it's cool but um you know i think like a a good ponzu is is worth definitely spending money on though like yeah. a quality ponzu Absolutely. That sounds delish. So tell me a little bit about like, what are some recipes? Like what fish base do you like? Do you use rice? Um, like what's your sauce mixture? Like, let's get some details. My poke bowls. Um, one of my favorite poke bowls is, um, I use African pompano or tuna. Uh, and then we use, you know, uh, sesame oil to taste and then, uh, soy sauce to taste. Um, I think the biggest problem, the biggest thing that people run into when they do their poke is that they don't cut up their vegetables and they don't cut up the meat like fine and fine enough. Um, so they get, you end up with these huge chunks that don't like get evenly sauced, you know, and they don't, they don't like, it's kind of weird when you put the avocado in, like you don't get the consistent amount of avocado on each like little chunk if you don't cut them up fine enough. You know, and it's not like you don't want like one big chunk in your mouth. You want to like feel a little, a few little chunks. Um, so like cut it up. I'd say if you think you're cutting up too fine, you know, you're probably still not cutting up too fine. Um, and then you also have to dice your, your shallots the same, you know, fineness. Um, your green onions still have to be diced very, very finely as well. Um, so when, when you do that, you know, I think that makes a huge difference, especially with the mouthfeel. And, and the amount of sauce and the way that everything gets, you know, mixed together. Um, and then I'll use, I like to serve it on a bed of arugula. Um, I don't know a lot of people use that on their poke, um, but arugula and then um, fragrant, fragrant um, broken Vietnamese rice. The, the broken rice, I think, is very good. Is that rice treated with anything like rice vinegar, like sushi style, or is it just pure regular rice? I don't really, I don't like to make it sushi style because I mean, then you're just like, all you're mixing is the seaweed, right? So I just use regular rice and the arugula um, adds a pretty cool little kick to it as well. Dude, I like that, that little bitterness from the arugula. It sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's, how about um, sashimi? Do you do anything special for your sashimi? Like, I think the sashimi thing is just to like really treat the, the filet like the best. Um, and to like cut it in the different muscle groups, uh, you know, a lot of people will just like cut the whole loin off and then they'll just serve it like that. But like the loin really turns into two parts. You have that top strip and you have the, the actual loin loin, you know, and when you don't cut the right way or you cut, you know, with the grain or against the grain, um, sometimes you just, depending on the fish, you know, it, it definitely affects the taste of the, of the sashimi. What parts of the fish should we be doing sashimi? Like, is it? Say for a yellowtail, it's like, do you use more of the top piece of the fish or do you use some of the belly? Do you like omit the tail because it's too sinewy? Because I've never shot a yellowtail. Um, but Sorry, like I was just, I was for my own reference, hunter. but like for, say a yeah. pompano or, or, or what? Yeah, I prefer the, 
the top, the loin is, is like that's that's the primo, you know. Um, for sashimi, if if I'm making poke, it doesn't really matter, right? Because everything's just getting diced up. So like, I'll save, I'll separate it all out in different parts. Like you know, like write on the package like primo sashimi, and like write primo sash on it. But then like the other ones will be like, you know, poke, 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 like poke scraps, or like even at the end of it, you know, the carcass itself, you can still scrape like meat off of it to make like spicy poke with. Yeah, that's how they, that, I think that's how they make spicy too. No, I'm not really sure, but yeah, I think so too. I like to throw the carcass in the oven sometimes and just get all that meat. So much is wasted. It's crazy. Great. Do I you agree. have a sauce that is it similar to your poke sauce? Like, what do you like to dip your sashimi chunks in? Uh, I'm pretty traditional, man. Just either ponzu or um, soy sauce. Um, I have friends who make like my girlfriend makes like a great like sauce where she makes like sriracha and like sesame oil. Um, she makes like sushi ginger in it. Um, puts a little bit of wasabi. It ends up really really good. That sounds amazing. Uh, do you ever use wasabi like the fresh wasabi? I do. Yeah, uh, man. I wish I had access to fresh wasabi. I had it for the first time in Japan a few years ago, and I was just blown away. It's almost it's almost a joke. And how good it is. It's like, wow, I'm tired of this horseradish green fake crap. <laughs> yeah, it's almost a joke on how like shitty like the freaking green stuff in a tube is, right? I When I went to Japan, it totally ruined everything sushi for me. Like I just across the board, like unless I make it myself and I have like fish that I shot myself, just going to any place in LA or, or wherever, I'm just, I know it's not sushi. It's just, you know, fun food. You know, I just, it's not for gourmet. It's just to get full. And then like when you're in Japan, and, cause I went to that Tsukiji fish market. My God, I was just like, I can just die here. Everything is perfect. I agree. I mean, the whole Japanese culture, you know, there's doing everything to perfection and finding that one thing in life that you're good at and, and just like doing it to perfection and trying to perfect it even more. Like, oh man, I love Japan so much. <laughs> Same. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's uh let's shift gears. How about whole fish? What do you like to do with the whole? Like what what fish are you eating whole and then how do you like to prepare it? I like to do uh snappers whole, like smaller snappers. I think, you know, the size of the fish has a big determining factor on how you treat a fish. Um I do like to do like whole fish and I'll stuff it with like a pesto, like a basil and onion, uh, green onions and um you know, herbs. And, and olive oil and I'll stuff the body cavity with pesto and then I'll score the sides and then I'll like rub pesto into the score scored sides and then I'll put that on the grill or I'll bake it pretty high on the oven and I think that like if, if you get the right size I think size is a huge determining factor but like you put it in one of those uh, fish baskets that you can put on the grill to flip fish around and uh, that I think is like really really good dude you sold me at pesto that sounds so, so <laughs> delicious. And then, um, do you like? I mean, have you have you heard of that whole the whole fish cookbook by Joss Nyland? Or yeah, yeah, yeah I, I have it. Oh, perfect. And then you you say you make a a fish broth, right? So it's like you don't like to waste the carcass of the fish that most people just throw away. So like, what do you like to do broth wise? Just depends on the fish type. Um, you know, I it just depends on who I'm serving it to as well. Like, um, I know like my my parents like don't mind like a fishier taste but like my my white friends will be like oh this is too this is too fishy <laughs> you know um but i think the key is to like figure out like what what kind of fish you are you're using uh, and how it turns the broth into um i use african pompano african pompano is one of my favorite things to make a fish broth out of um just because the bones are so clean there's like not that much blood left in the in the in the kidney area you know like the backbone like we're all that real dark bloody bone marrow kind of stuff is um cleaning the bones you know out before you do that and then when you put it in um just boil it on really really high heat right off the bat and that's what makes the broth like super super creamy um gets that gets that flavor into the broth and then use a lot of ginger don't be afraid like if you think you use too much ginger you probably didn't you know the ginger is what takes away the the fishy taste and then uh you can really counter that with the like a white pepper in the broth as well that sounds amazing thank you for expanding the palate of our howly friends you know i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad uh 
<laughs> You're expanding their, their taste buds. Uh, I hope you guys have found some delicious recipes here. Um, if you do try anything out, make sure you send a picture to, uh, to Ben, you know, on Instagram, you know, what you inspired, what he inspired you to make. And tomorrow will be our last episode with Ben. We're going to be talking about how he got a world record fish on the pole spear. So thanks for being on the show, Ben. Hey, one more thing before you go. If you're on the socials, you know, the Instagrams, the TikToks, the other platforms, follow us, say hi, at Cast and Spear all over the place. That's at C-A-S-T-A-N-D-S-P-E-A-R. I'll see you over there. Chat soon.